are the tales of Boab. This is our first ever Q&A, so get comfortable. You can see we have a drink, so grab yourself a drink if you'd like and enjoy. Um, we're going to switch things up. We've never done a Q&A before, but the ones we do watch, it's usually people um, just on their own boat, picking their own questions. We have Bill here, and he is our question master. So he's picked the questions. We don't know what's coming. We don't know what order, and I think that might make it a little interesting. So Michael, who, who asked these questions that we're going to answer? We asked Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and our patrons specifically what they wanted to know, what we hadn't covered in any of our videos. And you gave us a lot of awesome questions, and we sent all of those over to Bill to vet the questions, to condense them, to... I don't know what process he went yeah, through, tell but us he's about really organized tell us about your got process them down. I, yeah, I combined them. Um, some of the people ask very similar questions, so I'll combine them into kind of one question that you guys can answer. And then I, I came up with some of my own that they don't know yet what some of these questions are going to be. So that should be interesting. As we get through, some of the good questions are going to be from you guys. And some of the fun questions, I think, are going to come later that they don't know are coming. So we'll see how that goes. All right, let's get started. Several of your viewers have asked a similar question that basically involves how did this whole thing start? How did Bums on the Boat become Bums on a Boat? And how did Michael come to join you and sail with you on the boat? My little brother is going to take all the credit for this because he read Sailing the Farm by Ken Newmeyer and he had this idea, the original, the seed was my brother Tony. He sold it to my friend Jared. Shortly after that, they sold it to me. So that's how the, the whole idea began. It was just an idea to live on a sailboat, sail the farm. So we all, we all worked our day jobs and we saved up for two years straight. And then we drove to Florida with a fistful of cash and we found pretty much the first boat that looked decent and we bought it. And Michael, where, how did you get mixed up in all this? Um, so I met Joel before the boat idea even happened. We were working at the same golf course in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Um, we started out as golfers, basically, before we were sailors. I don't know how many people know that. We were both nuts about it, played golf every day, every chance we could. And so that's how we first connected. Um, we became friends, we stayed in touch over the years. I was still in college, he was kind of moving around back and forth, working at different golf courses. And during that time, he bought a boat and I was totally inspired by that. I didn't even know that that was possible, that you could go off and sail around the world and live on a boat. I thought that was so cool. Um, and then I got the opportunity to join him on the boat after I graduated. He kind of called me up Randomly one day, the timing was perfect. I was actually about to buy a van to live in, to drive around in, my own version of a sustainable living in a small space, a mobile home. Um, but he asked if I wanted to cruise the Bahamas with him, and I was like, yes. At that point, we were not a couple. We were very explicit about that. I said, I'm going to be crew. I'm coming to have an adventure. Um, and that lasted about a month. So part of that, uh early complex question there was how did you two become a couple how did we become a couple i asked michael if she would be my girlfriend on our second day on the water so the first day was a little hairy but we got to drop anchor and the second day it got really bad and we had water over the floorboards i was pretty sure we were going to lose the boat and michael was just amazing and she was so relaxed and she worked through it and we fought our way to the next spot and during that sail I asked Michael what we were doing and if she would be my girlfriend and she said yes. What are we doing out here? Yeah. Is that about how you remember it? That's exactly what happened. Yep. And you said yes? She and said, I yes. said yes and we kept sailing and we yeah. made it to Miami. I had no idea what I was getting into. I think that's why I was handling it, not because I was brave or anything. I just didn't know what was going on. Was but like, was about oh. to sink and Here we Joel go. doesn't know what he's doing. Bailey Scott asks, Ooh, Bailey, what accomplishment are you most proud of in boat life or life in general? I got a quick answer. Okay. My, it comes to mind right away. It's, it's 
successfully over two years of a relationship on the boat with this babe. That is definitely an accomplishment that I'm proud of. It's been hard work sometimes, and I'm so glad that we're still together. That's an accomplishment Yeah. on that tiny little boat. Yeah, I was going to say getting the boat back in the water, but I think staying together I'm really proud of that. and getting the boat back in the water is pretty big. Yeah. She also wants to know if you could ask Lola three questions that she can answer for you, what would they be? Oh, we gotta get Lola in here. Three questions one. that she Lola. can answer. Well, come Lola, here. come here, old girl. Come here, sweetie. One of the questions I ask Lola almost on a daily basis is, what do you think? I ask her, what does she think? So one question I would ask her is what I ask her every day. What do you think? I always want to know what Lola thinks. Yeah. But I guess that's a really general question. You got one? What would you ask? I wouldn't know what she thinks. Um, man. I, w I want to know that she's okay with this life. She seems okay most of the time. She doesn't know anything different. She seems really happy, but she also lives on a, on a tiny boat and, you know, Sometimes I hurry. Yeah, and then my question would be, my third question is, who is your favorite, dad or mom? I would, I would definitely want to know. I think, I think I'm coming. I think I'm winning some points on Lola. Oh, okay. You doing, doing good? Okay. She's in on, she's in on this now too. All right. Bailey can. also wants to know, what's the longest you've gone wearing the same shirt or pants? Oh man. Ooh. Or other item of clothing. I want to say I wore the same pajama pants for probably a month. Yeah. In Marathon, you wore the same. In Marathon <laughs> and sailing to Miami, I just wore the same pants. So I, I'm going to say a month. I'm that's not even safe, sure if you changed that's your a low, boxers. That's a low estimate. I changed my boxers more than the pants. Wildcard, Bill, what's the longest you've ever? Mm. I'm just curious. Is, uh, is that I, I would say probably... I think I've had these shorts on for at least two weeks. Two right weeks? Now. <laughs> well, there you go. All right. Yeah, it, I, I don't know if it's a boat life thing or something else. Or just a poor hygiene thing. I <laughs> think it's just a boat life it's thing. It's a boat life thing. <laughs> yeah. You judgmental people don't understand until you've lived on a boat. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just functional. You save water. Oh, yeah. You're caring for the planet because you're using less resources. That's really the main Exactly. It's not. It's not because we're lazy. It's, it's because all about it's the because earth. we care about the earth. That's why we wear the clo same clothes every day. Can you paint your dinghy bottom with anti fall paint? Of course, we did. Hundred percent, yes. We didn't paint the tubes. We just painted the hard bottom, but we were pretty happy with how it turned out. Sweet Miss Sue wants to know when are you going to the Bahamas, and can you do a tour of your boat? Mm. The Bahamas could be a while because it it took us. So, I, it didn't take us a long time. There's a lot of effort to fight your way south and east. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be nice to go through the Bahamas when we finally decide to head back that way, but we wanna get to Grenada at least before we decide whether we wanna head back or go to, towards Panama. So we're really leaving things open. So Bahamas won't be yeah, for hard to say. two years at the earliest. But I think we are coming up on a tour of our boat relatively soon. I can't say for certain that it's going to happen like within the next few months because we do have some big we plans do the tour coming up. after some great projects are complete. Yeah. <laughs> and um, anyway, we'll, we'll get the tour of the boat because that is something that we are excited about. It's on coming. the list. It's on the list. A couple of viewers have asked, Joel, have you asked that girl to marry you yet? And when is the big day? Ah. Uh, I have talked to her about marriage quite often, but we haven't had the official ring proposal yet. So no, I have not officially asked her to marry me yet. So I guess that means the big day is not planned. The big day is not planned. TBD? TBD. TBD. Where do you get food and other supplies? Fresco and... Piero Supermercado, a bunch of tiny little Comados. Those are all in Luperon. It's, um... What it's, about the big hall? It's basics here in Luperon. So for the big hall, you gotta go to the big city, big supermarket called Jumbo, which we went to, gosh, a couple months ago now. It's 
stocked up and we're probably gonna go again real soon and I think this time we're gonna take you along so you're gonna get to see what it's like to get food and supplies here. Another viewer asked an interesting question. You arrive in North Korea after three months at sea and a short fat man with a dodgy haircut wants to come aboard and sample your best cocktail. What do you offer him to drink? Don't. Okay, so this is, if, if it's what we typically have on the boat, a nice cold glass of water would probably be the best thing we have. Or a cup of coffee. Or a cup of coffee. Yeah. But if we had any options. Right, if this is more hypothetical, I'd whip him up a whiskey and coke. A nice strong whiskey and coke. <laughs> what, would you, what about you? <laughs> Strong on the whiskey. I don't even know. Weak on the coke. Loda, you're in the shot, old girl. I'm sorry. Here. <laughs> Here, you can sip a tea dish. There you go. Just get a little low. <laughs> She's a snow bike, aren't you? <laughs> all right, whiskey and coke, that's, that's all we got. No, that was my answer. What's your answer? Oh, my answer. Um, a gin and tonic. Pretty. I guess. Safe, right? Safe. We're, we're pretty boring. You wouldn't spike it with some poison or anything? <laughs> Short dodgy man? No. No poison for him. I think it might come back to bite us in the butt. Yeah. yeah. I think I want to make him happy. All right. How much more work have you got to do on the boat before you can head for the horizon? The horizon? Well, there's always more work to be done on the boat. But we do have a master list right now before we can leave this harbor and do some serious sailing. And the time frame is four weeks right. on this master list. And we would technically be heading for a new horizon. So can we say four weeks? Yeah. Four weeks. <laughs> and then all we gotta do is catch the perfect weather window at the perfect time that our boat is ready. Yeah. That's the trick. Alright. You can have any boat. What is it? Go ahead, Michael. This is always a hard one for me. Yeah, I, Joel I don't, doesn't... He doesn't look into the future. He's not a dreamer like I'm that. I'm super happy to have shock. So, which is amazing. Yeah, but I've been kind of finding out about warm catamarans, and I think they're really cool. So maybe like a, a Pahi 42 warm catamaran, but I might want to build it ourselves. You know, that's probably my dream boat right now. But I haven't changes. put much thought into it. Yeah, I, I think I'm all in on shock. I haven't even let myself think about other boats yet. It's just trying to get this old girl up and running. If you won a million dollars a year for the rest of your life, would you still live on a boat and sail? Oh my God, what a great question. I think it's, it's, it's such a hard question to answer unless you actually do. I'd yeah. like to say that I would. I'd like I'd to say that I would. I still want to travel. I would still want to travel the whole world. I'd probably get another boat though. I mean, I love yeah. shock. If it was that much, yeah, I'd be happy. I'd just keep living the boat life, but we'd probably travel a lot more. We'd have a different boat. I, I'm not going to lie on that. <laughs> that one. But boat life is awesome, and I think traveling is in our blood. Yeah. We'd probably see our family a lot more and just be bouncing a lot more. Yeah. What's your first destination? that you have planned when you're ready to go, um, where are you headed, and are you going to head back to the U.S. or somewhere else, things along that line, so do you want to add for that? We are getting ready to head for Grenada, kind of make a little Hail Mary play in about four weeks. We have a scheduled arrival date in Grenada, and we're going with Bill and his family, we're going to buddy boat with them. Um, so if everything goes really well in the next four weeks and we get our boat together and we find our weather window, we're going to be going for Grenada. Alright, next question is, uh, if you could have one thing for your boat or boat life, what would it be? One thing that you don't already have that you like. And I know Joel's answer. Well, I was going to, what? A bathtub. I was, that was my impulsive answer, but it's not realistic. I mean, just a bathtub. If I just put a bathtub on chocolate tea, it wouldn't work. <laughs> it, we don't have enough water. It'd be no. I uh, anything for the oh I I don't know. Yeah. A windlass would be nice, but even a windlass. I mean, yeah. we we do fine without a windlass. Yeah, 
I don't know. I'd be more stoked about more batteries and more solar. True. I, I would get know. a battery bank like your battery bank. Oh, <laughs> I would so get lithium great. batteries. That's what it would be. Or an electric motor. Ooh. You can only have one, so I would get the lithium batteries. Michael would get the electric motor. All right. <laughs> Next question is, Joel, did your hair ever grow back? Yes. Check it out. It's still working. There's a little white streak here, but she's looking good. Oh, it's getting kind That's of real. Now, when were you guys stressed out really bad? Name a time. In the boatyard. The boatyard was, um, but we were unaware of how stressed we were. Yeah. Um, I got, the, what came to my mind immediately was um, in the Turks and Caicos right before we crossed to here, Michael, oh Michael yeah. and I had a bit of a tip that was really like the closest we've ever been to being on the edge. It was almost over right then and there. Yeah, before we sailed here, so that was stressful. Yeah. I think that was way more stressful. And then we sailed here and then we went through a tropical depression which turned out to be the first named hurricane of that season. So that was stressful too. That was stressful, but that happens so fast, it's not like... It's not really as stressful as like a, the relationship issues or even the slow boatyard slowly wearing on you. When you get yeah. caught in a storm, it's so crazy. I don't, being stressed is the last thing I can remember being amped up maybe. And how about some of the happiest moments or happiest moments? Hmm. Happiest moments, you go. When we got to go sailing for the first time since putting our boat back in the water. I mean, we were nervous, but I think that was just like excited, nervous for me. That was all happy energy. For me, it was waking up the next morning after our, our crossing here and seeing land. And it was really calm. It was like, <laughs> ah, because you made it through such a crazy storm. Yeah. And then it's like, you see the land, and it was just a happy feeling. All right, the next is another group of questions that several of your followers have asked. Similar questions along the lines of, um, how long do you think you will live the cruising life? Or where do you think you'll be in 10 to 15 years? One asked, where would you be in five years? Or where do you see yourself in five years? And we've talked about probably a five-year plan, which would be to sail to Grenada, and then would be to s sail all the way back up through the Bahamas, nice and slow, sail up the East Coast, and from there we will be po poised to make another crossing once we work on the boat there. And we're giving ourselves five years to have a baby also. I want to have kids before I'm 30, and I'm 25 now. So that's kind of a five-year plan. 10 to 15 is really hard to answer. We're open to like where life will take us, but we, um, not at this point in our life yet, I am seeing a lot of value now in like planning your 10, 15, 20 years down the road. Uh, but at the beginning of this, I didn't know what tomorrow would bring, and that's always been our mentality. Will you get a bigger boat? Right now we don't need to, and we can't. So for now, no, definitely. we're. We're set on Shopping Tay. We love her. Um, we haven't given up on her yet. But possibly one day, yeah. Maybe. And I think it's part of like my all-in mentality where I don't really give myself an option out. I'm not like looking for bigger boats and other boats. I'm just all in on Shock Mate, yeah. so like these questions about what my favorite boat would be, I don't really even know because I'm not shopping and it's um, it's a natural thing tendency of mine to just be all in. It's not really a strength, but we're working with it. But I'm a dreamer, so I've always got plans. I'm really in the moment. Michael's really thinking ahead, so it's a good combo. All right, a viewer, Michael Schick from Kings Island, Australia, wants to know, Joel, if Michael hadn't joined you, would you still be sailing? I would probably be dead. What? Oh. Okay, that's a fair answer. Well, because <laughs> here's the king. I was determined to sail by myself if I had to. So what I was able to do with Michael is unbelievable. With the channel and the boat, I don't know where I would be. I don't know if I would be sailing or not. It's such a hard question to answer. He'd be dead, though. I, I don't know. I mean, just the two of us have, you know, had some close calls and seem to have barely made it this far. I, You've been so helpful just trying to do all this on my own and see all of you solo sailors out there and single handers and even, you know, just solo guys living alone. My hat's off to you. It's a lot of work. Even if you're living in a nice, comfortable apartment, if you're all alone, just living is a lot of work by yourself. 
what would you both like to do when you're done globe trapping? I think we have a little vision. Yeah. Michael, I think we'd get a little like plot of land with a mini farm. And a couple sheep. A couple of sheep. I would make a little music studio, probably where I jam out and really focus on music more. Yeah. And, and I'd family. Have a nice garden. I'd like to see family a lot more, and we just kind of become more homebody, boring people. Yeah. Why not buy a good rebuilt Yanmar instead of continuing to pour money into that vault? An excellent excellent question. question. Because we answer? can't. Well, the the answer, I guess, to me, when someone says, "Why don't you just get it, put a new engine in?" It's like that sounds great, but the logistics of it, as you know, being a Lupron, it's it's not as easy as just buying an engine. First, yeah. you got to get it here. How are you going to get it here? How are you going to get it out out to the boat? Get yours out of the boat. It's so much that goes into that. It's not simple as just buying a new engine. Yeah. And we're not in a position to do that. We could have got an engine, a rebuilt Yanmar, probably if we were in the States. But I'm not sure that we could have afforded to keep the boat in a marina or a boatyard or, you know, like everything was really kind of dicey there in the beginning when we left Florida. Like we had about $2,000 yeah. and we just sailed off, you know? We are like, we gotta make it to the Dominican Republic before hurricane season. And we came back to the States with like $200 left and we went to work for the summer, you know? And then we came back and we hauled out in the boatyard and everything's just been touch and go since. A rebuilt Yanmar would be amazing, but it's just not in the cards for us at the moment. Are you gonna keep the motorbike when you take off? For now, I think so because a sponsor of ours, Andrew from the patio, has offered to let us keep our bike there. But I'll have to work out if it's going to be long, long term, see if he still wants to stick to that bargain. Maybe he yeah. doesn't want to be a sponsor of Bums on a Boat after all. But we'll check with him and if not, I don't know, we'll sell it. Uh, one viewer wants to know, Michael, what did your parents think of your new dude at first? I don't know. They're really supportive of me. I think they were kind of maybe sketched out by Joel in the beginning when they'd never even met him and I was flying to Florida to go get on a boat with him and sail off. But by the time we both came back together and they met him, you know, he's a pretty charming guy and personable and genuine and I think he made a good impression. But he did have the crazy hair back then, so I think they were probably still just like, the whoa. Crazy hair. And they, they've always been super, um, like, welcoming and I haven't really felt any kind of animosity or negative feelings from your parents. So, I don't know if that's true or not, but even in the beginning, they're... They were welcoming, come right in, and cut off some cow testicles right out of the gate to that was my dad's break the ice with her dad. Welcome. Here, we're going to castrate the calves. I think he was trying to have fun with the hippie kid, which I think is hilarious. I think mean, Michael's dad is awesome. What was the biggest obstacle in getting started sailing? Money, experience, or something else? Money. Money was, it still is, it's, it's uh, always a balancing act and yeah. getting enough up front to not only be able to spend it all, but then to have the time and the money to continue to spend it without working. So how did you do it? Well, we cut all expenses that we could. We lived like on top ramen and beans and we worked every day. You saved up for two years. I saved up for two years. I worked a cash job as a caddy. We had no TV, I slept on the floor, we shared a one bedroom apartment, we ate sprouts, and that was, I think, essential. In but the, I don't think the, that should be discouraging, I think that should be like encouraging, because it is possible. You can have literally nothing, you were living paycheck to paycheck, you had no savings. Before the boat idea. Yeah. Yeah, no, I lived paycheck to paycheck. And you made it happen. Right. Right, and I'm in a finan I'm financially in a better sp position now somehow than I was when I worked, you know, 40, 50 hours a week for years and years and years of my life. I don't know how that happened exactly, but it did. If you did this again, would you buy a boat and put it on your own land to fix it up? If I had my own land and the boat, the, the right boat was in the right area and easy to move, yeah, that would be a sweet set. All right, same, same viewer asks, uh, is it worth the cost and hassle to fix it out of the country? 
That's a good question. As I well. say a hundred percent yes. I love being in this country. It yeah. is hard at times, but when I remember being in even Key West, which was cool for a while, but I'm so happy to be in this country. I have to say, every time that we go back to the States to visit, we just start bleeding money. You know, like the cost of living there and just, you know, going out and seeing friends and having a good time or just dinner, you know, it's insanely expensive compared to what it is here. And those are the things that really add up even more, I think, than what you're gonna spend on the boat. I mean, the, really the only way we were able to make this happen was to cut as many costs as we could possibly could cut. It wasn't about making as much money as we possibly could. It was like, where can we not spend money? Mm -hmm. And when you go back to the States, it's like impossible, unless you just don't wanna hang out with your friends and family and just hide out. But there have been added costs to getting parts here and it has been difficult so I don't know if we actually looked at it it I don't think it would even out actually what do you mean like if we were in the states living in the states mm -hmm. working on the boat mm -hmm. as opposed to being here working on the boat with added cost of shipping everything in I still think it's cheaper here oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. speaking of going back to the states uh, one of your viewers asks what you miss most from living on land? Mm. I, I'll go first. It's easy. It's a, a nice hot bath. I love hot baths and I haven't taken one since I left the States. It happens every time, but a nice hot bath has been the hardest thing for me to sacrifice. Julie used to take a hot bath every single day, not knowing what a luxury that was. I didn't know it was a luxury. And what about you? Oh, mine's along the same lines. It's just like water is what I miss like the unlimited nature of water where you can turn on a tap and you can have it piping hot or freezing cold, drink it right out of the tap, or out of the garden hose, take a 20 minute shower, like do a load of laundry. It baffles me that I used to hate doing laundry when all I did was put it into a machine and press a button and walk away for an hour. <laughs> and now I so spend hard. a whole day like getting a workout in a bucket. All right, uh, one of your viewers wants to know, when are you going to spruce up the woodwork? Oh, God. That's really down there on the list. It's I down gotta there. Say. Yeah. First, we're going to do the engine, and then we're going to put a toilet in the boat, and we're also trying to finish up the interior paint. There's just a lot of things that are going to happen before the woodwork, but it, it will happen. It's going to get done. If you could pick one system on your boat to be finished, working, and never again break, which system would it be? The sails and rig, the engine, the head, or something else? The head. I would say the engine. When they make a movie about your life, who gets cast as you? I'd say Johnny Depp is gonna play me. <laughs> but it's probably gonna be Jim Carrey. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think it's Jim Carrey. Which would be flattering as well. Jim, you can have you can have the part. Unless Johnny Depp wants it. I really hope Emma Watson's been working on her American accent because she's probably going to have to play me. Thank you for your feedback. We hope you enjoyed this and we hope you continue to watch Bums on a Boat. Thank you. Bye. Oh, subscribe. Oh, subscribe. These are the tales of Boat. Focus. Boab! Lola dipped. How come you're so quiet?